Order the final item of business this morning is a member's business debate on motion number 6642 in the name of Sarah Boyack on broadcasting Black Hole for Scottish Rugby. This debate will be concluded without any question being put. Those members who wish to participate, please press the request to speak button. I call on Sarah Boyack to open the debate. Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. And can I first of all say thank you very much to colleagues who have signed my motion. Uh, you don't get this slot, as we all know, without cross-party support, and I'm particularly pleased to see the support from colleagues across Scotland. I do very much hope that the fact that we are having this debate today will send a message from Parliament and from the communities that we represent that we want better coverage of Scottish rugby on terrestrial television. Obviously, with Murrayfield in my constituency, I take an interest in the sport. But I'm also impressed by the strong support for the game evidenced by the players and the volunteers in local clubs and schools across the city. And with the series of briefings we've all had over the years, it's been apparent that the sport has reorganised its governance structures and put in plans placed for growth. Rugby is a much-loved sport in Scotland, and the massive support for recognition for Bill McLaren certainly didn't surprise me. And the way the campaign grew on Facebook tells you something about the changing age profile for the sport too. I think in each of the last two years, MSPs have been involved in discussions about the development of schools rugby for boys and girls, and plans for growing the game to 38,000 this year from a base of 24,000 in 2006 7 were achieved. But without coverage, it will be hard to inspire the next generation to get involved. Young people need to see their heroes. They need to learn the craft of the game and their skills from watching the big matches. And I know the Scottish Youth Parliament are taking an interest in our debate today. We've also heard about plans to build on the sport in communities. And we've heard about plans for rugby being introduced into the Olympics with the re-entry of Rugby Sevens in 2012. And over the next few years, there will be opportunity after opportunity for international rugby events. We're all signed up to greater participation in the sport, and I particularly welcome the support from the Scottish Sports Association for the debate today in, in recognition of the health benefits there are from wider sports participation. There's also the rehearsal we've had in the chamber before of the importance of the sport financially, with events at Murrayfield being worth nearly £130 million to the Scottish economy annually and £72.9 million in Edinburgh alone. But with all that positive backdrop, we still don't have consistent coverage on TV outside the Six Nations Championship. And my motion calls for more investment in the broadcast of Scottish rugby to ensure a broader range of rugby matches and tournaments at all levels. This year, we were able to watch the Scotland team's fantastic performance in Argentina. But two years ago, the same matches weren't covered, and there seems to be no logic in what is covered and what isn't. Scottish rugby described the current position as being deprived the oxygen of national exposure. And we're unique amongst the home nations in terms of our poor coverage. Wales and Ireland in particular have far superior coverage, especially given the size of their populations. And of course, the game is bigger in Wales, but that shouldn't mean that we have such disproportionately less coverage. We've got professional rugby clubs in Scotland, Glasgow and Edinburgh Warriors, and they've been doing very well in the Magnus League, but historically, they haven't been getting the coverage. And it's not good enough just for online news and radio coverage. I'm told by rugby fans at club level that the coverage clubs get in England and Wales is having a dramatic and positive effect on grassroots rugby. TV legitimates sporting events, it can provide the stimulus to growth and it gives support across the whole country. But in Scotland, the Murrayfield Wanderers report that the lack of coverage over national, uh, major national and international matches is making it hard to recruit new supporters and players to the game. And they want on record that it's of great concern to supporters and clubs alike, and they believe that it's undermining the game at the community level. So in terms of the future development of the sport, it matters. We need to see growth at every level if we're to have the national teams in the future that everyone would want to watch. Scotland is now at its joint highest ever position of seventh in the world rankings following success in Argentina. We need to build on that. Over the next few years, we'll see rugby on the world stage more and more. We'll have the challenge of the Rugby World Cup in 2011 in New Zealand, the London Olympics in 2012, the Glasgow Commonwealth Games in 2014, and the World Cup in England in 2015. And in 2016, there will be new competitors joining the Olympics for rugby from Russia, Samoa, and Georgia. So there are more competitors coming in every year. 
And if we want to give our national team the best possible chance, then we need to make sure it gets the support and coverage it needs. And if Scottish rugby have to pay for TV coverage, it means that vital resources are diverted from growing the community level of the game. And it cannot be right that Scottish rugby have to pay for coverage in recent seasons of the IRB World Series 7s just to get the tournament broadcast. Things are moving, though, and I think it's important we recognise that today. The BBC Alba deal earlier this month is a big step forward. It will mean that for the next four years, we'll see coverage of at least eight uh, Glasgow or Edinburgh home matches per season. And we're also going to see a, a more joined-up approach with the Welsh and Irish public broadcasters. That's got to be built on, because we're a long way seeing, from seeing rugby get the level of coverage that it should be able to expect in Scotland. There's an opportunity through the BBC Trust strategic review to argue for a fairer deal because Scottish rugby are concerned that rugby in Scotland is being marginalised because of a lack of coverage. We need the kind of support that other sports get. So will the Minister today tell us what the Scottish Government can do to put its weight behind Scottish rugby? I do hope that our national public broadcaster, BBC, will sit up and listen to debates, today's debate. They've demonstrated through their experience in Wales that there are innovative ways to bring games to the screen, particularly using the red button. We want to hear how that experience can be used to get better coverage in Scotland. So I thank colleagues for turning up today. I look forward to hearing colleagues' uh, support and comments. And let's hope that with support across the Chamber, we can try and get better support for Scottish rugby so that our national team, which is doing really well, gets the support and development it deserves in the future. Thank you. We move now to the open.